Our Mo language with arithmetic is nice, but things get a lot more interesting when we add function calls and function definitions. So in the gray box here, uh, this is a general convention by the way, gray boxes behind code means it's Mo code as opposed to Splate code. This is uh, what we want Mo to look like now. You can define a function like double that takes an argument x and adds x to itself, a function quadruple that takes x and calls double uh, a couple of times, and quadruple at the end on two, we should get out eight as the result for our uh, new Mo language. So how do we extend Mo to do this? Uh, first of all, do we add functions into expressions? Uh, no, because a function definition is not an expression. So that's going to be one di different thing that we have to deal with, definitions and the different two, two expressions. How about function calls? Are those expressions? Yes, a function call is another kind of expression. I'm going to use the words call and application interchangeably. So a function application is a function call. I'll sometimes even say function app to mean application, and I'll even use app as part of the uh, variant name in our new definition of expressions. So function definitions are not expressions. Function calls are expressions. Uh, how will we deal with function definitions? So here we've got uh, several things to, to represent, right? We've got a name triple. That's important. When we write a function definition, there's always going to be fun at the front, but we don't have to represent that uh, in abstract syntax because it's always there, just like we don't have to represent this colon or these parentheses. Right? Those are interesting for parsing concrete syntax, but not for representing function definitions. So those are some things that we have to, to represent, just the name of the function, the name of the argument, and then the body of the function. So what is the body of the function? It looks like an expression, except it can also have variables like x. So we could introduce a new type body x that's just like x, but also has identifiers in it, or IDE here is meant to be a, a name like x, right? And so on the inside of that, we have a, a symbol. We could do this, this would work out fine, but it's a shame to have body x being so similar to just x, and it's not gonna be worthwhile in the long run to make this distinction. So instead, what we're going to do is add IDE just into our X, uh, into our X existing type. That means that you can use uh, variable names in any sort of expression, even if your whole program is just X plus X plus X. That's going to not turn out to be an error when you try to run it because X is not defined. But that way, we can inside of our um, function definitions just have plain old expressions. So to summarize, what we need to represent now, we're doing our data analysis for an interpreter with functions and function calls. We need numbers and addition and multiplication as before, but we also need identifiers, and we also need function calls. And these are all different kinds of expressions. And then separate from that, we need a notion of a function definition that has three parts, a name for the function, a name for the function's argument, and an expression for the body. We can put that into a splate type declaration like this. We've got x, we've added the IDE here, and app here into that uh, type. And then we have separately fundef, which has just one way to define a function with fd, with the function name, its argument's name, uh, and the body expression. If we look at how to go from concrete terms, like 1 plus 2, into this uh, abstract syntax representation, uh, 1 plus 2, we're going to parse the same as before. It'll be a plus c of an nt1 and an nt2. How about x plus 2? So it's still a plus expression, and it still has 2 as the second part, but the first part is an identifier. Uh, that identifier we represent with IDE. I can't put just x here, because if I did that, that would be a splate variable x that doesn't refer to any splate definition of x. But by putting hash quote on the front, I make it a symbol, uh, and that means just the name x that's inside an IDE. So x plus 2 is plus e, ide, and nt, just like this. How about this function definition? So now we're looking not at the expression representation, but the function definition representation, so it must be an fd. And we have a name as a symbol for the function. That's the plus 2 comes from this part. The x comes from the argument name right here, and then the body expression, x plus 2. We've already talked about that. That's the plus e form. What is this now? This is a function call, right? Plus 2 applied to 9. Uh, so now we're going to use app e to represent that. So we have the function name. Uh, that's the name of the function we're calling, plus 2. And then an expression for the argument. 
So this is an interesting thing about epi. It's similar to plus e and multi in that it has two parts, but they're not both expressions. For the functions, for now, they're always just function names. When we have a full Mo program, though, it's a combination of function definitions and expressions. So we're going to need to deal with both of these parts in our interpreter. So this is how you would write the full program that we started with in concrete syntax. The way we represent that is we have two definitions here, each of which made with FD, and we'll put those in a list. So we have a list of all our definitions in this program, and then we have this expression that we actually interpret. So this is kind of like the main of a mode program. So we have a list of definitions followed by an expression, and we have just these two parts that we'll pass separately into interpret.